Hi, I'll be talking about early detection of breast cancer, what primary care physicians need to know. The objectives of my talk are the following. To highlight burden of breast cancer and importance of early detection. Describe benefits, harms, controversies of breast cancer screening. And emphasize the importance of timely management and understanding next steps in breast assessment. In the WHO, 2019 report, cancer is found to be the first or second leading cause of death before the age of 70 in 112 countries. And their global burden is substantial. Breast cancer is the leading cause for global cancer incidence in 2020, and it is the fifth leading cause in cancer mortality. It's, however, the burden is not evenly distributed, and the outcomes are variable depending on geographic locations. As you can see here, the highest incidence is for breast cancer, 24.5%. However, uh, in the, the mortality in females is the highest for breast cancer, it's 15.5%, followed by lung cancer. Without serious intervention in improving breast cancer care services in the Middle East, women will continue to suffer and die from a disease which all over the world is seeing increasingly high survival rates. Unfortunately, these are patients that have been seen in the Middle East, and actually they were part of my breast clinic. So how can primary care physicians help? So they have essential role. The primary care providers, they can help with early detection through enhancing breast cancer screening. They can do that by identifying screen eligible populations and recommending appropriate screening based on guidelines, patient history for both average risk and high risk patients. They should be able to manage follow-up of abnormal screening results for the tests that are reported by the screening mammograms. Studies have shown that lack of continuing care with a primary care provider is an important risk factor for never having had a screening test. Recommendation of a trusted primary care provider is strongly associated with cancer screening uptake. Primary care providers know their patients best and their views about cancer and screening. Therefore, we always defer to them to have the awareness burden and to enhance the uptake of screening by their patients. However, as we all know, primary care is actually complex. It has multifaceted approaches. Therefore, they need a network of support for management, whether with relationships, where they can have tools and systems to enable them to enhance the relationship with their patients, other primary care physicians and their team members, with specialists and with healthcare teams. Also, they need to manage data and information. So well-organized systems supported by information technology is essential. For example, in Ontario, we have screening activity reports that provide access to guidelines, checklists, protocols, access to information and clinical supports. This all gets together for processes where effective navigation by patient and their primary care providers along the continuum of cancer care. Therefore, there will be a standardized process of management across the primary care um, ecosystem. So what's early detection of breast cancer? Until breast cancer can be prevented, early detection is, is very critical and it has two arms, screening and early diagnosis. This is important to decrease pain, suffering, costs associated with treatment and to decrease death associated with breast cancer. The most widely used modality is mammogram, which is needed to move significant portion of the population to stage one. The importance of early detection is the fact that treatment would be more effective when disease is detected early in its natural history than in a more advanced stage. Also, prognosis is better for smaller tumors with negative axillary lymph nodes. So obviously the patient on the left with this mammogram here with a small tiny breast cancer in the right inner lower breast, definitely better than the prognosis for this patient with a large mass metast with metastasis to the axillary lymph node. The principles of screenings are the following. 
it should be happening in asymptomatic population where periodic surveillance in a population without signs or symptoms of breast cancer. And that means patients have no palpable lump, no focal pain, no axillary lymphadenopathy, no skin or nipple changes, and no nipple discharge. Global breast pain or diffuse breast pain is actually okay, where patients can still have their screening. Screening efforts must be incorporated into advances in breast cancer diagnosis, treatment, and palliation, which collectively would result in improved survival rates. So what are the benefits of screening? Reduced mortality and morbidity from the disease. More treatment options when cancer diagnosed early, as we said, at either a pre-malignant stage or very early stage. Better use of healthcare dollars and improved quality of life for patients, and as well as peace of mind. However, let's have a candid discussion about this. There are a lot of limitations and harms associated with screening that we need to understand. The anxiety about the test, the false positive results, which would result into the following, psychological harm for the patient, labeling or stigma due to negative association with the disease, unnecessary costly follow-up tests. Also, in case of false negative results, meaning that basically the patient is told that she has nothing on her screening mammogram and turned out to have cancer, this would result in delayed treatment. And the so-called overdiagnosis and overtreatment. We're gonna touch on this shortly. Having an organized cancer screening program is a must to reduce the burden of breast cancer. This would have an overarching integrated mammography quality management program. Also, it will help with overcoming barriers for screening mammography or diagnostic assessments. The backbone of this national screening program would be the primary care physicians who would enhance the uptake and manage the results of screening tests. So awareness, awareness, awareness. It's the step number one, two, and three in decreasing the burden of breast cancer uh, across um, the middle, low to middle income countries. Addressing the barriers for early detection of breast cancer starts with raising this kind of awareness. However, discussion of benefits and limitations of screening mammography will help women make informed decisions based on their clinical histories and risk factors. Providing brochures and pamphlets for common breast assessments and instructions can be very helpful for patients who may be overwhelmed during the evaluation, especially after a diagnostic test or if a biopsy is recommended. Understanding breast imaging modalities limitations is mostly lacking among the general public and some referring physicians. So it's time to educate them about what's the role of mammography, what's the role of ultrasound, when to order them, when to order MRI. It's very important to have that kind of understanding. So increase familiarity with breast care pathways stratified based on age groups and risk factors. When to start with ultrasound and when to start with mammogram is essential. So awareness will help women present earlier and prevent delayed diagnosis and advanced disease. I always keep this image for one of my patients to remind me about the importance of the cause and trying to really increase the awareness and break the fear barrier to have patients come forward and get the treatment. Let's talk about screening mammography. It is the cornerstone for early detection of breast cancer. We have seen in, since uh, 1990 a decline a decline in breast cancer mortality, and these are for two causes, due to early detection through screening and the improved therapy. Back to the limitations and challenges with specifically with screening mammography is the breast density, fragmented screening programs, variability in quality, limited access or limited resources, and other barriers like fear, which we just talked about, and above all the confusing guidelines from one program to the other. So here's an example for breast density, <clears throat> where you can see the extremely dense breast, and it's very hard. It, the, the cancer would be obscured by this high density. As opposed to the fatty breast, you can see easily a very tiny cancer there in the upper outer breast. So, however, still mammography is the standard screening tool for detection of breast cancer. 
keeping in mind that 10 to 30% of cancers may be missed with mammography. Being familiar with the breast imaging reporting and data system, called the so-called BIRADS, is very, very important because kind of it's the language used between radiologists and radiologists and the primary care physicians and as well as the multidisciplinary care. So it makes it easier for management and stratifying patient cares and the next step. Overall, on screening mammogram, the buy, the buy rats for a normal mammogram would be either one or two, which means either the mammogram is negative or had benign findings. It would be abnormal when it's marked zero because that means there is a finding and this finding need to be further assessed. And further imaging will be done, whether by another, uh, what we call diagnostic mammogram or ultrasound, plus ultrasound. There shouldn't be BIRA3 on a screening mammogram because usually we, we save that for a finding that needs a follow-up. And once the follow-up or once the diagnostic test is done, we can determine if the patients can return back to screening or she may need a follow-up versus a biopsy. When we see a suspicious lesion, we, we, give, her, we give the woman um, or the patient BIRADS4. If it's really highly suggestive of malignancy, it would be BIRADS5. Once we have the diagnosis of cancer, it would be a BIRADS6. So patients would be called back from screening mammograms for the following reasons, either a mass, asymmetry, microcalcifications, architectural distortion, skin thickenings and nipple, distract, uh, nipple retraction. Let me talk a little bit about the anterior breast screening program to give you an idea, because it's one of the unique programs and very well advanced because it has both average risk and high risk screening. The average risk happens every two years where women get screening mammograms uh, every two years, starting at the age of 50. So the asymptomatic women who are at the average risk for breast cancer, who are uh, at age 50 to 74, they get screened with mammography every two years. Women with increased risk, they have annual screening and those who have high risk pathology lesions. So these, those are not cancers, but uh, pathological lesions that have a risk associated to become cancer in the future, or if they have a positive family history. Also, they get annual screening mammogram if their breast density is more than 75%, or if the radiologist uh, or the primary care provider recommended an annual screening. And sometimes the patients themselves or the client themselves ask for it. So they, they get the annual screening. According to the Canadian Task Force on Preventive Healthcare in 2011 guidelines, uh, as you know, they're, they're guidelines that they didn't uh, routinely recommend screening between 40 to 49. And I, I have to say something here about the Middle East, as you know, the incidence in the Middle East for breast cancer is 10 years earlier compared to North America. So therefore, it's totally justified, in my opinion, that screening mammograms start at the age of 40 in the Middle East. So I wouldn't definitely change that. I would, uh, I would stick to 40. Sometimes even if the patient is high risk, definitely they should go earlier. Also, in high risk patients, MRI uh, would be recommended on an annual basis, and we're going to touch on this. Uh, but like it's not routinely recommended for average risk women. In terms of breast self-examination, they recommend not advising women to routinely practice breast self-examination. Also, they recommend not routinely performing clinical breast examination alone in conjunction with mammography. I will pause here and just say this happens in a situation and environment where there is a very well organized screening program and women are protected by having access to a screening with mammogram either on an annual basis or every two years. In countries where there is no screening uh, mammography available on, on routine basis, I think it's important to still practice breast self-examination as more than 50% of cancers present with a, a clinical finding. So, and, and women don't have even primary care physicians in the Middle East, especially in, in Palestine. Rarely you would have um, a primary care looking after patients uh, and women, like healthy women who are asymptomatic on a regular basis. And clinical breast examination routinely may help in detecting those palpable lumps. 
probably it will it will increase anxiety and and false negative uh, false positives yet it's one way to lower the stage of breast cancer as much as possible this is the high risk obsp screening guidelines where women would start at the age of 30 with digital mommography and mri on annual basis um, and uh, between 70 to 74, they will have only mammography and over 75 will be still only mammography. However, their physician will decide that. As we know, sometimes there are contraindications for MRI. Therefore, those patients will uh, get bilateral screening ultrasound. We have a process that the primary care physicians will have a referral model for high-risk OBSP. Um, and where basically they will evaluate a patient's based on a, on a very specific process. They end up referring those patients to genetic clinics and they would tell us if the patient qualify to get into that program. Let me show you an example here. This is a patient that's identified to be a high risk patient for screening with mammogram. And as you can see here, it's heterogeneously dense. There's no abnormality seen on the mammogram. The patient ended up having an MRI. And as you can see here, <clears throat> there is a tiny nodule, three millimeter enhancing nodule in the left breast with a corresponding speculated nodule depicted on the second look ultrasound. This was biopsied and turned out to be cancer. We left a clip after the biopsy, as you can see here, excuse me. And uh, this patient had lumpectomy and this is a wire localization preoperatively and the patient basically, uh, her life was saved from that screening MRI. Let's talk a little bit about overdiagnosis, which means detected and treated cancer cases that would not have affected mortality if they had been left without any intervention. For example, DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, diagnosed at age of 50, is thought to have to progress in 61% of women and regress in 11%. However, overdiagnosis cannot distinguish cancers that if left untreated wouldn't lead to death. And the clinician or the patient cannot know whether a screening detected cancer is an overdiagnosed case or not. With that, still we have to have a balanced approach for workflow. And I would like to share that statement said by Mark Siegel, who said, it's not just fear of lawsuits that drives testing. There's a philosophy of practice that encourages defensive medicine. It's part of the culture of not wanting to miss anything or to be criticized for not covering all the bases. So I think we are to blame as radiologists and maybe primary care physicians because many malpractice cases arise because of the misconception that mammography detects all malignancies and that any delay in diagnosis leads to a, leads to a worse outcome. Therefore, we become more defensive and we wanna cover our bases. <clears throat> Let me show you this example here. This patient had a screening mammogram in 2012. In 2017, developed a nodule, which was depicted on screening mammogram. She got her diagnostic workup, spot compression views, showing the nodule to persist. She had the ultrasound, solid nodule, irregular in the posterior depth of the breast, had the biopsy. This is the needle here. This turned out to be invasive ductal carcinoma. So screening mammogram actually was very helpful. And the patient with a post biopsy Clip here again, left and got the preoperative wire localization and end up, ended up with lumpectomy. Let's say if that nodule hasn't been picked up. So on another patient, here is the patient in 2014 with a screening mammogram negative. There is a new abnormality here in 2015. You can see small, tiny speculated nodule, which actually was missed on the screening mammogram. And in 2018, this has enlarged and became palpable. This triangle usually marks the area of palpable lumps. And you can see that this nodule here is solid and speculated and sits posteriorly in the breast with the risk of invading into the chest wall, taking the patient all the way into stage four. So really uh, picking those lesions early on screening is very important and I wouldn't call it overdiagnosis. When we have a patient who had um, cancer and with lumpectomy, we usually do annual screening for them after like for our survivors but we offer them also tomosynthesis because we feel it will add more um better uh, better detection of the cancer so this is uh the area where the patient had lumpectomy and there are post-surgical changes but on the tomosynthesis 
we see that actually it's more conformed into a mass and probably invading into the chest wall. So we took her for ultrasound and sure enough, it's not just fat necrosis, there was a mass in the, uh, in the left breast posterior depth at six o'clock. We did the biopsy and unfortunately the patient had recurrence. You can see it here on the MRI, you can see it on the sagittal CT, here is the speculated mass over here and it's invading into the chest wall. Diagnostic breast imaging workup or assessment would be done through two things. Either the patient had a callback from screening mammogram or the patient is presenting with clinical signs and symptoms and referred by her doctor to the breast clinic. As I said, more than 50% of breast cancer patients have clinical symptoms or signs and the timely and accurate diagnostic workup for image guided biopsies are crucial to ensure early detection of breast cancer. The biopsies can be done under um, the guidance of different modalities, most commonly ultrasound, but they can be with under mammographies, which we call them stereotactic core biopsies. Also, we use MRI-guided core biopsies. We recommend the biopsies to be performed um, based on the safest approach and utilizing the modality that best depicts the abnormality. As I said, when we work up the, uh, work up the patients, we try to complement the digital mammography with targeted ultrasound. However, sometimes for problem solving, we use breast MR. So just to, to touch on breast MRI, we use it for problem solving, breast cancer staging, to assess the extent of disease, whether it's multifocal or multicentral, because that would determine the next steps in terms of surgery, and to rule out contralateral breast cancer, and above all, to assess response for treatment. Let me show you an example. This is a patient, she's 63. She had a cancer uh, known invasive ductal carcinoma diagnosed already. And you can see here the flow void from the post biopsy clip in her left breast. We did the MRI before the surgery. And sure enough, in the right breast, like the other side, there is a small nodule uh, that was enhancing. So it's very important to arrange for the second look ultrasound so that we don't delay her surgery. The patient had the ultrasound. There is a nodule solid that biopsied and unfortunately turned out to be invasive ductal carcinoma. However, that would make her surgery done at the same time so that the patient doesn't have to go back and forth in terms of treatment. And this is an example showing how breast MRI can help monitoring the, 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 the response to chemotherapy. This is a patient with multifocal disease, the breast cancer here in the outer breast, and also there's a lesion in the central breast. After chemotherapy, all dissolved with no enhancement. These are the biopsies that we do. This is the stereotactic images during stereotactic biopsy. We take samples and then we image them to make sure that we got the calcification. This is ultrasound guidance FNA for a lymph node. And this is breast MRI, which a biopsy where patients get also compressed under a grid to determine which window we will use to put the needle in. Let's talk about protocols and workflow. Primary care physicians need to have clear understanding for the protocols of workup of all potential abnormal breast findings that are coming, that are shown on screening mammograms for what, what do you need to do for a mass, asymmetry, microcalcification, and architectural distortion, what sort of tests need to be ordered. Yes, they will be protocoled by the radiology, but it, but it would be really nice if the primary care physician have an understanding about it. Also, Ensure a dynamic workflow with quality processes that would include the following. To allow the radiology department to accommodate same-day breast biopsies for highly suspicious lesions for patients who may not comply with the recommendations. Meaning, if you know that um, your patient, you trust the radiology center that <clears throat> your patient is going to, allow them to do the biopsy without having to refer your patient to a surgeon or for you to have the discussion with the patient. Also, make sure you close the loop on patient care after they get a breast biopsy. Always check for the addendum with what we call radiology pathology correlation so that you can determine the next steps in the context of the clinical history. Also, I'd like to remind you as well about the reports from the workup, uh, from the diagnostic reports. Sometimes we say it's negative in radiology. However, clinical correlation is recommended because the final disposition for the palpable lump or the nipple discharge or the skin change will depend on the clinical evaluation. So make sure that things that need clinical follow-up get followed up because it's important to make sure that the images was not false negative. Again, this is an example for a callback uh, for a mammogram with a nodule. And basically the patient ha here had um, a mass, as you can see. 
and the nodule got uh, uh, biopsied and it was cancer. Talking about early diagnosis and uh, where awareness is very important because basically there will be early signs and symptoms of cancer in order to facilitate more effective and simple therapy. This woman got lucky, she's 37 years old. The lump was very superficial, that's why she was able to feel it. However, can you imagine if it was in the center of the breast? It's very hard to feel it and uh, the mass will increase in size and metastasize before the woman would feel it. And this case, in, in this here, as you can see, there's internal vascularity and she got the biopsy and it was cancer. On the other hand, this woman unfortunately presented with a palpable lump because the lesion was in the posterior breast. And as you can see here, invading into the pectoralis muscle. And also there was metastasis to the axilla. When to scan the axilla, again, uh, this depends that the, there's variable, uh, variable practice. And basically, uh, whenever you see a suspicious finding, we scan the axilla, but we don't biopsy it all the time until we check with the surgeon. This is the 38-year-old pregnant woman with palpable lump. And I'd like to caution you about the masses felt during pregnancy and postpartum, because these are, if they happen to be cancer, these are the most aggressive and need to be addressed. This woman also had saline implant. As you can see here, there is a mass that got uh, biopsied on ultrasound and found to be cancer. She had the MRI and unfortunately she had multiple nodules and ended up with mastectomy. Not every lump is a cancer. So this is a woman who presented with a palpable lump and when we did the ultrasound, it looked heterogeneous. We did the biopsy and turned out to be a hematoma. And she had no history of trauma, but still this happens. So it was important to biopsy it to rule out the, the hematoma. Sometimes patients would show up who are on blood thinners. They do have the bruises. And you can see that basically they explain the appearance of the mammogram when there is an asymmetry here, which has resolved after three months. So make sure that you follow it until resolution. Also, the hematoma can develop post-biopsy, as you can see here, after a stereotactic core biopsy. And this patient presented with a cystic mass, uh, a cystic collection, which was a hematoma. We helped her by aspirating the hematoma to get rid of that asymmetry. Breast cancer also happens in men. This man, 77 year old, presented with retroareolar lump and uh, in the left lower breast also there was a lump. Luckily, this was a, a gynecomastia in the, behind the nipple, which is the most, co most common thing. And also this was a sebaceous cyst because we can see the duct on ultrasound. However, uh, let me just say quickly that uh, gynecomastia as well can happen uh, either unilateral, as in this case, sometimes most of the time it's bilateral and it's idiopathic. But not everything behind the nipple is gynecomastia. Rarely you will find the cancer, just like in this um, unfortunate 53-year-old male, where basically also the lymph nodes is thickened and turned out to be cancer. But remember, breast cancer in men is rare. It happens in less than 1% of all breast cancers. And gynecomastia is the most common underlying cause for retroareolar masses in males. Let's talk quickly about the common breast complaints warranting imaging. And that would be pain, lump, thickening, nipple discharge, nipple and areolar itching, skin changes or redness, and asymmetry, uh, asymmetric size and axillary lumps. Um, the asymmetry in size is sometimes a normal finding. This patient presented with pain and she had asymmetry in size, but this is the normal appearance for her breast for so many years. So that's why it was normal. Her, her, mammo, her mammogram was fine. Her ultrasound was okay and we let it go. As opposed to this patient here, when there is new asymmetry in the breast with some redness, nipple retraction, and that unfortunately turned out to be inflammatory cancer. Again, bilateral nipple retraction with some redness in the skin. It's abnormal because it's new and her mammogram was abnormal. And again, that was bilateral breast cancer inflammatory on the left. This redness here in the skin, um, it is within normal limits because her mammogram and ultrasound were negative. It was presumed mastitis. She got treated and it has resolved. Sometimes patients present with shrinking breast, which has become hard and not just the enlargement. And unfortunately, this was abnormal. Uh, appearance and turned out to be cancer. And the bruise here is actually from the biopsy. Sometimes women present with asymmetry in size with skin changes. As you can see here, you can see the uh, fenestrations in the skin, 
which looks like the orange peel or pudronge, and that was basically uh, due to inflammatory breast cancer. With all that, it's very important for the primary care physician to understand the multidisciplinary collaborative cancer care because it's an effective approach for improved patient's outcome. Breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease with different pathologic subtypes which have different therapeutic paradigms. So in the core multidisciplinary team, the most important person that the primary care physician should know is the breast navigator. She has a crucial role in patient-centered, high-quality care for breast cancer patients. The navigator is the glue to bring it all together. So basically, she can keep you or he can keep you in the loop to let you know where uh, the patient is in terms of ensuring that patients are timely booked for further imaging, biopsies, and follow-up. And you stay in the loop in the full cancer continuum for, for your patients all the way from prevention, screening, diagnosis, treatment, survivorship, and end-of-life care. Also, you may help your uh, the team, the multidisciplinary team, by ordering the metastatic workup imaging from bone scans, CT scans for the abdo pelvis, the chest, and the head. I just want to say a quick thing on um, potential good screening test with contrast-enhanced mammography. You can see here this is extremely dense breast kind of the nightmare for any radiologist to report. But with contrast enhancement, you can see that this is a quiet breast and you can confidently say that there are no enhancing lesions. The contrast enhanced mammography also helps with uh, diagnostic workup. This patient had nipple discharge. We saw nothing on the mammogram. We couldn't find the lesion until we give the contrast and you can see it here in the retroareolar region. We took her to ultrasound and we found intraductal solid lesion that was biopsy turned out to be intraductal papilloma. I'm going to end my talk with this last case to keep it in mind. She is 22 year old female with history of pain in the left breast for three months. She had previous recent history of ruptured pectoralis muscle due to injury at the gym and now she has skin redness and pain, no fever. We did the ultrasound, heterogeneous mass, we thought it's a hematoma. We asked her to come back in three weeks to basically do the follow-up. In three weeks, we thought the mass has decreased in size a little bit. However, she came back four weeks later, the mass is enlarging and it became vascular. And as you can see here on the MRI of the chest, unfortunately, the mass is invading into the chest wall. As you can see it here, following enhancement, it's basically going into the superior mediastinum and this turned out to be lymphoma. So the takeaway here is to keep an open mind. Not every breast lump is a breast cancer. Consider other differential diagnoses for breast masses beyond the breast cancer, particularly in the atypical clinical presentations. In summary, primary healthcare providers have essential role in early detection of breast cancer. Primary care is complex and multifaceted. Support is crucial to manage relationships, information systems, and processes. Understanding the bi rats is necessary in determining next steps of patient management. Familiarity with the diagnostic workup protocols is necessary for accurate and complete timely evaluation of breast cancer. Utilization of multimodality imaging approach can increase specificity and may obviate the need for unnecessary intervention or follow-up. Thank you very much for your attention.